Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for the October episode of Chain Reaction. My name is Taylor Young, and I am the Assistant Director at the National Keratoconus Foundation. We are a patient advocacy program based in Southern California at the University of California, Irvine. NKCF provides information to patients and their families and raises public awareness of this cornea disease. We invite you to visit our website, nkcf.org, and sign up for our newsletter and to register for our bi-monthly webinars. We also post news on our Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn pages. This is episode 19 of Chain Reaction, our Ask the Expert podcast. Our partner is Dr. Clark Chang, a keratoconus expert and friend of NKCF. We often receive questions about life with keratoconus and Dr. Chang is here to help us answer those questions. You can view past episodes by going to nkcf.org slash webinars. Dr. Chang is currently the director of specialty contact lenses on the cornea service at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia. He is also a member of the medical affairs team at Glaucos, the company that makes the FDA approved cross-linking product and equipment. He is a graduate of the Pennsylvania College of Optometry and a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry. We also have a very special guest today, Shanice Cole, who is going to share her keratoconus story. I'll pass it over to Dr. Chang to introduce her. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, first of all, uh, before we get into uh, before we get into the our mystery uh, guest, who is a huge star, um, I want to say that for the very very first time. Uh, I have the exact same break background as our guest because I'm traveling and I'm in a hotel room. I feel like the three of us are like one of those uh, slot machines where we all like have the same background and it's a jackpot today. Um, and it absolutely is because of Shanice Cole. Um, so yes, she is living with Carrot Conus, but she also has done something that Taylor and I probably would never be able to do. And that is she is a world champion. Uh, in the uh, women's uh, tackle football and freshly coming back from the gold medal victory uh, in Finland over Great Britain. So we'll get into that. And, and from my understanding of the uh, uh, talking to Shanice of the, the final score in the big final, you know, game day of 42 to 14, I feel like, uh, you know, she left uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, they must have, they, they basically ate her dust, our, you know, U.S. women team. Yay. Um, so. Without further ado, let's, uh, let's go to uh, Shanice. And uh, Shanice, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I can't complain. Oh, that's Thank great. You. Thanks for inviting me today. I'm super elated, super excited, you know, just to share my experience and my story. Yes, and you've been doing uh, you've been doing that, and basically, you know, sharing your journey on social media and really creating a trend and inspiring a lot of uh, our Keratoconus friends in our community. And so, want to get into that. And I obviously just thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us and and sharing your story live. Um, so I do want to. You have a fascinating career, so I want to get into, and because for most athletes it's not easy to switch sports because it takes a lot of different, you know, sets of skills in different sports. And you got your start in basketball. Um, and so how, can you tell us a little bit about how you got turned on to um, pro football? Yeah, so like you stated, I played basketball all my life. I played in college, I played overseas as well. Um, but when I was younger, I've always played sports. I always hung out with the boys and played like flag football and football out on the green in the yard or just always involved in sports. So when I came from overseas and I finished playing basketball, um, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. So that's the team. The team that I started off is called the Richmond Black Widows. How it all began, they had a, a meet meetup group that I found on this app just looking for things to do. And, I, and it says women's tackle football. So of course me, you know, being younger and playing with the boys and never being able to play in school or anything because that was kind of frowned upon for girls to play tackle football. So as soon as I saw the meetup group, I went to the first couple of meetups 
And it took off from there as far as the practices and games and stuff like that. So ever since then, I've been, since 2016 is when I first joined. And ever since then, I've been playing tackle football. Well, those who who may have frowned up on girls playing tackle football, I think they must be eating their hats right now because now you're a gold medalist, you're a world champion. Um, so how long have, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how long you have been playing before we get into your Kira Kona's journey, how long you have been playing football um, and maybe when did you realize that you have the skill set and what it takes to play at this highest competitive level? Yeah, so again, um, in 2016, I started playing football and I haven't stopped since. So I've been playing since 2016. Um, it's teams all across the country and different leagues called the WFA and the WNFC. So we play across the U.S., but I've been playing since 2016. And what made me feel like I can play at the highest level possible, which is world. So when I first started playing in 2016, I first heard about Team USA, women's tackle football team. At the time, I was new into the sport, fresh into the sport. I didn't believe that, you know, I I could go at that time. Plus, we also have to pay to play and we had to raise money and things like that. And I was just getting back into the flow of things back home. So I was like, hey, I'll wait. Just like the Olympics, Team USA only comes around every four years. So um, me playing the sport and meeting a lot of different people, playing against a lot of different people. I had people coming up to me say, hey, why didn't you try out in 2016? You know, I always explained to them why I couldn't, but it was always a goal of mine to at least reach the highest level and play Team USA. So it was originally supposed to be last year, but due to, you know, COVID and stuff like that, they had to prolong it. So this year, when the time came, I was still on the fence. But so the tryouts were in March and like two weeks before the tryouts, I finally decided to go ahead and register and try out. And come April, behold, I made the team. So that's where we're at. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, I have to say that, you know, I just timing and it's a story of perseverance and obviously athletic talents. Um, but I will say that also, obviously, the woman, the U.S. women team were really happy to, that you decided to try because now you also was part of the, uh, you were part of the force that helped the U.S. women team to win this gold medal. Um, basically, like you said, it's like Olympic that comes every four years and you, you guys took, your team took this gold medal against Great Britain, uh, Great Britain in the uh, I. Uh, IFAF World Championship in Finland. So can you tell me, how did it feel the moment that you realized your dream came true? You you guys won the gold medal. Um, it's unexplainable the feeling that I had. Like when we finally, the clock finally ticked down and we knew that we were going home as number one with the gold medal, I was more than excited and happy. I've never... All my years of playing sports, I've never played at this level. I've never won a championship at this level. So to do it with such a a great group of women, the 45 or 44 other women that were on the team across the U.S., imagine we only came together like two weeks before and all played together to come together and win on that level. Um, it, it was amazing. And, and I still get goosebumps from it even though I've been home for a while I still miss those girls I still miss playing with them I wish I could play with them all the time but that feeling to play with that group is unmatched unmatched right. wow now so what would you say well that, let's get a, get in a little bit on your and we'll come back to this of course but that, let's get in a little bit on your character corners journey because as you know and a lot of people have opened up themselves to you on social media because you share such intimate part of yourself. Um, and people with living with keratoconus often are being made, whether internally or externally, that maybe they could not pursue a certain aspiration in their life. And a lot of times it has to do with when exactly they were told that they have this visually, you know, potentially blinding, debilitating condition. So can you tell us a little bit about when you were diagnosed? Um, I was diagnosed in, I graduated college in 2010 for my undergrad, and I was diagnosed in 2011 
And the way I was diagnosed was I tried to join the military. I was trying to go to the reserves. Um, so of course they do a full workup of everything. So that's when I initially found out I had keratoconus. Never heard about it before that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our patients said the same thing. And also prior to that, you didn't realize that one of you, I, I don't know if it's one or both eyes, were actually, you know, seeing this poorly. Am I correct on that? Yeah, I had no clue. I, I, I wore the daily contact lenses, didn't know that my vision was as bad. Like you said, again, my I have keratoconus in both eyes, but it's worse in my left eye. Mm -hmm. But I never knew that my vision was so poor until I was finally diagnosed and they told me why that was. I see, right. And uh, so what happened after that, after you were diagnosed, were you concerned about how it would affect your game, your athletic career, or maybe other things that you enjoy doing in life? Um, and if so, can you tell us a little bit of how you were able to overcome that? Yeah, so like I said, I'm a super athletic person. I love sports. You know, I, I play sports all the time. I try to stay active. So for me, it was just like a gut-wrenching blow just to know that I have something that I won't be able to see as well. A lot of sports that you play, you, you, you need to see. So for me, it was more so like I was thinking I needed a corneal transplant. And with that, I can't be active. I can't play these, you know, sports where we're bumping up against each other, or hitting each other and all that stuff. So I thought that was it for me. And and it kind of made me sad because, you know, yeah. I, as I'm 34. I've been playing sports all my life. So it wasn't something that I was ready to give up at the time back in 2011, especially fresh out of college. I felt like I was in my prime. I was in the best shape ever. So it, it was a it was a big blow for me. And how did your teammates or family or friends and coach or, you know, people around you react to that news? Or did you share that news with them when you learned um, about the bonus? I didn't share a lot with my teammates and stuff like that, but I did share with my family and things like that. But they didn't know what it was, so they didn't know how to react. It was, I was just figuring out what it was myself and trying to explain it to them in the best way possible. So they always try to keep me in good spirits. And, you know, it was like, you know, that's not the final answer. Always get a second opinion. And, you know, so for me, my family and my friends were my support system for that. Yeah. And, and that's so important because now you have also you know, opened up so many hearts that you are part of the support system for a lot of our friends and within our Keratoconus community. So again, just thank you so much for, for what you do and what you have done. Um, and, and I think it, it's such a great point, right? We need as our support system, especially at, least at the time when you're not sure um, what you are facing in the future. And, and like you said, I, you, you you're not quite sure what that diagnosis meant. It, it sounded bad, but you you weren't exactly sure what the what the influences would be. And it sounded to me like you also did a lot of research. You saw mm -hmm. cornea transplant, and then so can you, and then you obviously got to a different type of treatment. So can you talk to us a, a little bit about how you went, how your research went, and how you became your own advocate and got the treatment that you you know thought was the best for yourself? Yeah, definitely. So. Again, like I said, I was diagnosed in 2011 and not a lot of people knew about keratoconus. So me not wanting a corneal transplant because I still have a lot of years left. I still want to be active. Um, I did a lot of Google searches looking for um, specialty doctors who knew something about keratoconus. Um, mind you, being in Richmond, the nearest place that I saw was in D.C., so right. I started with an optometrist who can take, at least take a look at my eyes and see you know, what else I can do as far as just trying to see better rather than just getting a corneal transplant. Um, I, my first appointment I had, and I still go to them to go to them to this day is Grove Avenue Ag Care Associates. They're the ones who first fitted me with my contact lenses, which were the hard contact lenses. Mm -hmm. And then as I, as years went on and technology and things got better, um, it was a doctor actually, an uh, ophthalmologist, who actually works in Richmond, Virginia, who is Commonwealth Accurate Associates 
and he changed things for the better for me, just being able to give me more information about as far as my options. And it wasn't only a corneal transplant. So I'm very thankful for Commodore Eye Care Associates and Dr. Yerno for, for providing me that information on um, cross-linking. So. And so when you were recommended uh, or when the recommendation for cross-linking was made to you, um, and, and just like a lot of people, again, something unknown, something new at the time, uh, were you, did you have any concern? How, what was your first reaction? Did you have to psych yourself up to, you know, kind of get ready for the procedure for the treatment? Um, I didn't have to be psyched out at all. I was ready because anything was better than a corneal transplant, which was a more in-depth surgery, um, especially if you're still active in your lifestyle and things like that. So when he told me about cross-linking and how long the procedure was going to be and outpa it was outpatient for me, I was all gung-ho. I didn't have to prepare as much as you may have for like a, a more serious type of surgery. Like this is still serious surgery because it helps you in the long run, believe me. But I was ready. I was ready to get it done. I was ready to do whatever I could to at least, you know, stop the progression of the 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 to stop the progression of keratoconus in the eye. So I was all gung ho. <laughs> okay, and and it you know like I think the odd you know our listeners can probably sense your enthusiasm and energy in life, and they may say, well, of course she's an athlete. She's not afraid of anything. Um, but you know, speak. However, sometimes nothing prepares you until the day of, right? Like when you're actually faced with whatever it is that, whether it's an obstacle or a sur surgical procedure. So let's talk a little bit about the day of. How was the procedure for you that day and what did it feel like to you after? Yeah, so the surgery the day of, um, I was a little nervous because first of all, you're awake during the procedure. Um, and your eye has to stay open the whole time. So I've never experienced anything like that where you actually have your eye open, kind of watching what they're doing. But throughout the whole process, Dr. Yurno made me feel great because as he, as he was doing certain things, he was talking me through it and things like that. I didn't have much discomfort other than the, the bright lights because your eyes open for so long for them to do what they need to do. So during the procedure, I felt comfortable due to, you know, just my surroundings and my doctor and everything that was taking place. He was explaining it to me. And then like after the treatment, um, it wasn't, I won't say it's smooth sailing, but it wasn't anything super complicated. They did give me like a a band-aid contact to put on my mm -hmm. eye. I couldn't use my regular contact lenses for a while. Um, but otherwise the 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 recovery was not bad at all for me. So it was it was I, I've had multiple surgeries due to playing football, I must add, and and this one has helped me the greatest. So and you, and you said something that was interesting, right? Like I couldn't put my contact lenses back for a little while. So then how long did it take you after the procedure before you could get back in the game? Um, I can't quite remember because it was so long ago. I think I had my procedure back in 2017, I believe. So it didn't take long at all. Um, I just followed the directives of the doctor. Um, so I was playing with one contact lens in my eye. He did say it was okay to go back and play. Um, of course, I had a helmet with a face mask and everything like that, but he did say it was okay to get back out there, but you cannot put anything in your eye. Um, so as soon as he said, you know, you can get fitted for some new contact lenses, I was ready to go. Wow. And were you um, then, and are you able to share a little bit with us in terms of what once you were able to be fit with a new contact lens or a new type of lenses, what happened and, and what's that like? And what kind of lens are, uh, are, are you wearing now? So before that, before the, the cross-linking procedure, I had the hard lenses. Um, okay. We used a little suction cup to put it in your eye. So I had those for a while. That's what I had to stick with. Um, I can only wear, the, wear those for about four to six hours a day. So if I had a competition or I was playing in a football game, I'll put them in right before 
so I can wear them as long as possible without having any, you know, irritation or issues of that sort. So after the cross-linking procedure, I got fitted for a hybrid lens, which is hard in the middle and it's soft on the outside. And with that one, I could just put them in like regular contact lenses. I pop them in and pop them out. So as far as what it did for me overall, the, the ease of wear, um, how often I wear them, like I have on my glasses right now, but any other day I'll wake up, pop them in, I'll pop them in for about 10 to 12 hours without any discomfort. And even if I have like little dry eye, but that's could be for allergies or anything, I can put like re-wetting drops in my eye. That didn't work the same for my hard lenses. And just being able to wear them all day is perfect for me because I do other things outside of sports that like maybe I want to ride my bicycle, I don't want to wear my glasses or something. So those contact lenses have been a, a game changer for me. I still wear them to this day. Um, yeah, they're awesome. And it sounds to me like your your doctor did such a great job at picking that lens specifically tailored for your for your eyes. Um, so, and even though coming from somebody who just said, well, you know, prior to that military exam, health exam, I didn't really even notice how bad my left eye was because both eyes were, you know, was working, were working together. Your right eye was helping you out. So even coming from somebody who didn't notice the difference, now able to wear contact lenses comfortably in both eyes, are you noticing a difference with both eyes together? Yes. Um, so like I said, I was wearing one contact lens for a while when I couldn't put a contact lens, but as soon as I had the hybrid lens and then they put the correct prescription in there. Uh -huh. They could see for days. It was like a big eye opener for me on high, how bad I actually was seeing before, how bad my vision was before I was able to, to get the new lens. Well, I mean, obviously, I, I, I now I understand why you're still seeing your contact lens specialist at Grove Eye Care because they are so wonderful uh, for you. And obviously, the recommendation, like you said, uh, for your cross-linking procedure have made you uh, have made all these possible as well. So I'm sure also sure that your heart is full of gratitude for your surgeon from uh, Commonwealth Eye Care Associate. Um, so do you have anything you want to say to either one of them at this moment? Yeah, definitely. So for my surgeon, Dr. Yurno from Commonwealth Act Health Care Associates, he's the one that actually got me started with sharing my story. He found okay. out I was playing football and shared it with a different few outlets and I was able to be in the paper and share my story. So I'm very thankful for him, not only for just doing that, but actually giving me different options when I thought I had exhausted them all. And then there's Dr. Knighted at Grove Avenue Eye Care Associate who um, who fits me for my contact lenses and checks on my eyes whenever I need to. If I have any issues, he'll I can drop in, and he always remembers who I am. So those those two have been life changers for me. So. Well, I think I think we're also always going to remember who you are, Shanice. I don't think any I don't think anybody can easily forget about you. Um, so, how about the and we're since we're talking about what a game changer it has been for you in terms of the you know stabilizing your eye condition and then improving your quality of vision and life with your uh, specialty contact lenses, the hyper lenses that you're talking about. Um, how did the ability of being able to see better with your hyper lenses and being able to wear them for much longer rather than kind of work, you know, pick and choose what time you have to wear them only around game time. Did that help you with your game or anything that you're doing at work or in life? Yeah, I have to, it's just a, for me, my personal experience has just been an overall better quality of life because a lot of things that you do, like when you're used to being able to see and then all of a sudden, like your, your vision starts to gradually deter. It's like when I finally get something that works for me, it, it helped out a lot as far as just everyday life. Driving at night was difficult for me, even with my glasses on, it was always like a lot of glares and stuff like that. So me wearing my contact lenses for that helps out. Um, me playing sports, of course. Um, I'm able to, I, I have a gold medal now and I still play other sports. I'm able to like 
go hiking and ride my bike and bring my dogs and I always worried about my glasses slipping off so it it has been it has been awesome for me yeah I kept everything you say kept you know bringing a smile to my face because I just can't imagine like you know that that's exactly what I want to hear from my patients and Again, I'm just so proud of what you have accomplished and what your doctors have done for you. And also just, you know, you have inspired so many minds and so many lives with the, you know, with your social media, you know, posting and sharing your journey uh, as you're, you know, as you're going to the top of the world in Finland. So may I ask you now, I, and I know that from what you and I had talked about a little bit before that a lot of people had came up to you and on social media, sharing their story with you. Do you have any personal either tips um, from you, um, Shanice Cole, world champion. Um, any personal tips to those in the Kira Dakona's community listening right now and maybe wanting to participate in sports or pursue professional career or a professional athletic career, um, such as what you have accomplished? Do you have any tips for them about what to do? And if they're feeling down about their Kira Dakona's, what should they do? Uh, yeah, I have a, a few tips. First of all, like, don't ever give up on your dream. Uh, if I would have did that, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Um, there's a lot of people that we don't know of who actually has keratotonus. Me being one, and then if you follow NBA, you have Steph Curry who had keratotonus as well, who has keratotonus as well. So don't give up on your dream. Just I would say do your research like I did because if I would have went along just with my the first reaction is somebody telling me I need a corneal transplant. Again, I still wouldn't be playing football. So it's just about, you know, doing your research and, and just reach out to your friends or family or, or me on social, media, on social media. I'll be your support system as well. You always need someone who, you know, can relate or just uh, talk to you about what's going on with your with your eyes. Or if, and if you can find a specialty, a specialty doctor who knows about keratotonus, that's that's the most important part right there because they'll be that'll be your lifeline as far as your options and what will come next as far as your vision is concerned yeah and thank you for offering to be people's uh you know supporting system and, and life coach and we'll put your uh, social media handles in the comment section of course do you have one that can you quickly verbal can you quickly tell people where they can find you yeah yeah it's um it's at Cole, which is my last name, C-O-L-E, Hearted, H-E-A-R-T-E. And that's on Instagram. And my other handles are just my name, Shanice Cole. You can find me that way. Okay, perfect. And I I also, um, I found a coverage of you from uh, Fairfax County Times and a quote that I really love that you said. So I want to read it out loud. Um, so this quote where you say, even though I'm living with keratoconus, the ability to get keratoconus procedure um, cross corneal cross-linking has motivated me to stay active and keep playing the sports. Um, and that the possibility of playing at the highest level and win a gold medal playing tackle football has always been your motivation to stay on course and nothing was gonna stop you. This is of course prior to before you went to Finland. So now that you have accomplished what you said you very publicly, what you were gonna do, which is win a gold medal, now that you did that, what is next for Shanice Cole? Um. I thought I was going to stop playing, but I'm going to continue to play. I'm actually going to be playing for a team called the Houston Mamas. They are in Houston, Texas. Um, they're in the WNFC, which which is one of the premier leagues for women's tackle football. Um, I just want to continue to play and continue to motivate, you know, the girls under me. Like there, there's girls growing up who's finally starting to to realize that they can play sports and that they can play football of all things. So I just want to continue to be a someone who motivates the little girls who are growing up and also those for those who have care components and don't believe they can be as active as they can be so just being a voice and also continuing to follow you know my love for the game and continuing to play i'll be taking my talents to houston so i'll be in houston playing for them and hopefully you know we can win a championship with um our league that's another goal of mine so that's the next thing for me well, they are, there you have it, I, I, I'm a world champion and Keratoconus life coach 
and with humility. I can't believe this. Uh, Shanice Cole, you're such a brave and exemplary person that I, at least I am counting my blessings to have you in our circle. And so thank you so much and welcome to the uh, National Curator Conus Foundation community. And uh, I, re I would love to have you back, especially when you, uh, not that it's necessary, but especially when you have your second gold medal, which I know you're gonna get. I would love to do another episode of, of Chang Reaction, even before, but especially after you win your medal, you must come back. Would you promise that? Yes, I will. And I'll definitely send you a picture when we finally get them in December so you can see the gold medal. Thank you, Shanice. Your story is really inspirational. And I know so many people are going to think, wow, if she can have keratoconus and be a gold medalist, like I can do what I want to do too. So thanks for sharing that with everyone. It's been an honor just to speak with people who are, you know, who's going through the same thing as I am. So I'm super elated, super excited. So. Yeah, and we're so thankful that Thank you're you. able to, you know, you're that you can set examples for uh, our keratoconus patients and and volunteer to be, you know, to offer advices on social media and be their mentor. And that's what really National Keratoconus Foundation is about as well. Um, so we also want to be like be that for our friends and patients. And so if you have any question for Shanice, feel free to send the questions to her or to us uh, or any other, you know, clinical questions that you would like to have answered. Uh, we would love to take care of that for you at National Keratoconus Foundation. Um, and with, with that, we're going to uh, have Taylor tell us what's next. Okay, and with that, you can join us again next month for a new episode of Chain Reaction. And if you want your keratoconus related questions to be answered in an upcoming episode, you can submit them at the link on the screen. Finally, NKCF operates with the support of friends and donors. So if you feel the urge to support us, you can make a much appreciated online gift at the UCI Foundation. In closing, I just want to thank Dr. Chang again and Shanice for talking with us and giving us your story and just really giving us a, a fun story to, to start our October month on. Thank you.